We are assembled here in New York, home to iconic skyscrapers like the Empire State Building. It's only been for 100 years or so that we've been able to build these skyscrapers because only since then, fundamental technologies like concrete and high-strength steel have made it possible to build so tall. Now, unless you work in construction, you probably don't think about concrete and steel in your everyday lives. And that's because these technologies are so reliable, so dependable, that you can confidently forget they're even there. They always work. Coming up with the fundamental, highly reliable technologies behind Web3 and on-chain finance is the mission of Chainlink Lab's research team. There are two requirements for a successful fundamental building block. One, it needs to be truly fundamental. You need to be able to combine it in various ways to construct all sorts of systems. And two, it needs to be of very high quality because the taller we build, if any of the building blocks that our systems are constructed from crumble, break, have a flaw, the entire building tends to come down. And especially in a space like ours, where we are responsible for securing vast sums of money, our users deserve only the best quality. These are the builders on the research team that are doing this difficult work of coming up with innovative, fundamental, and dependable building blocks. And this is hard. It's one thing to come up with an idea for something, and it's an entirely different thing to truly come up with a block that stands the test of time in production under the adversarial conditions that we find ourselves in in Web3. So huge shout out to the team, um, and also big shout out to our amazing cast of academic advisors that we are so fortunate to work with. Many of them have been doing blockchain research before the word blockchain had even been coined. So I've been telling you about concrete, I've been telling you about steel. Now let me show you what the actual building blocks of Web3 and DeFi and Chainlink are. They are fundamental technologies from computer science. At the bottom here, we have cryptographic primitives like encryption, signatures, and so on and so forth. On top of that, we have incentives, peer-to-peer -peer networking, on top of that consensus. And on that foundation then rest the Chainlink runtime environment and the Chainlink standards for interoperability, compliance, data, and so on and so forth that in turn support the entire Web3 and DeFi ecosystems. Today, I'm going to talk to you about two building blocks, one old and one new. The old building block, a little bit like steel, you might almost forget it's there, is our Oracle consensus protocol family called OCR. It's been running in production since 2021, and it's been the solid foundation of all of Chainlink's products. On top of it, we have the Chainlink runtime environment, we have all of the Chainlink standards, and we have Web3 and DeFi. And Recently, we, we had a great example of why it's very important to build on solid foundations. The two major cloud providers, AWS and Microsoft Azure, both suffered major outages to their systems. Um, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people were affected by these outages. They, they went down for many hours. Um, and unfortunately, even in the blockchain space where we prides ourselves on reliability, on dependability, on decentralization. Many other major projects, many other interoperability and Oracle solutions were down and were suffering from this outage. But, and I'm very proud of this, not Chainlink. Chainlink was up throughout this entire time period, 100% network uptime, and did not suffer any degradation. And again, at the, at the root of this is the reliable building block of Oracle consensus that allows us to have these systems running even in the face of downtime of some of the nodes, even in the face of malicious nodes participating in the system, all through the magic of Byzantine fault-tolerant consensus. Let me illustrate by virtue of example a little bit more quantitatively what's going on here. So if we look at our most recent 
OCR3 Oracle Consensus Protocol, uh, which is powering the data streams product that's launched in 2023. Um, we see that we've secured over $200 billion of trade volume. We are consistently achieving a data latency in the sub-second range, so below one second between data being observed and ingested by the consensus protocol, all the way to an attested secure consensus report having been generated. And despite this fast speed, despite the system having run for such a long time, the uptime is the gold standard of mission critical systems, 99.999% or higher. Um, this is not some promise. This is not some documentation entry on a website. Oh, this is what we hope to achieve. No, this is the actual number that we have achieved over the last one and a half years or so. And so I'm very, very proud of that. That's, that's a difficult thing to do. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a fortunate moment when one gets to be on stage and have such nice numbers to present about the past. Thank you. Um, but of course, we don't stay idle. We don't rest on our laurels. We keep improving. And so in the newest version of the OCR consensus protocol that's going live here at SmartCon as part of the Chainlink runtime environment, we have greatly amplified the system's ability to process data. Because for CRE, we want to target institutional grade workflows that process lots of data, that store lots of data, we have amped up the data processing ability of the protocol all while maintaining the same battle-tested reliability, the same battle-tested low latency of previous protocol versions. And so to illustrate this again in a quantitative manner here, I have two numbers that we have measured um, recently in a fully decentralized DAWN uh, with um, nodes distributed throughout Asia, North America, East and West Coast, and Europe. And in, in blockchain land, there's a bit of a tendency sometimes where people tune their benchmarks to death you know, 10 billion TPS, 10 trillion TPS, the higher the number, the better. So it's just important for me to point out, these are not numbers that we tune particularly. This is just us running the soft software in its default configuration and kind of seeing where we get on pretty reasonable hardware, nothing crazy. Um, there's all the little fine print at the bottom for the technically inclined folks that want to know the details. But what, what I want to point out here for, for everyone is that first of all, we can store a lot of data in the system in a fully replicated, self-healing, secured by consensus manner. Um, so 302 gigabytes, to put that in perspective here, is actually a little bit larger than the entire world state of Ethereum. So the entire state that Ethereum has built up over a decade, we can now store in a single decentralized Oracle network. And mind you, we run more than a thousand of these things in production today. Second of all, we have greatly amplified the ability to disseminate data through the system. So a lot more data can flow through the system now. And again, to also put this number into perspective, we're talking here about the scale of, again, a blockchain cliche, but it's true, the scale of Visa. So all of the transactions in the Visa network uh, that are flowing through the Visa network, this is roughly the bandwidth that you arrive at if you do the math. Um, and also, since we're here in New York, um, the scale of, for example, the New York Stock Exchange's equities BBO feed, you can look at their technical documentation online, you will end up with a number very close to this. And this is all now supported in a globally decentralized, highly reliable distributed Oracle network running OCR. So we are, we are really getting to institutional grade decentralized solutions here. And speaking of institutional grade, we are here in New York, the epicenter of global finance, home to Wall Street. Um, and we're here at a special moment in history where the US financial system is now so open to blockchain innovation. But there's a problem, there's a wrinkle in this story. If we want to bring banking and capital markets on chain, we need to solve privacy. Public blockchains today, as the name implies, make everything public, everything transparent. And there's no way that Wall Street, that traditional finance, are gonna come on chain and make public their trade positions, their portfolios, their balances, all of their proprietary confidential financial information. 
So if we want them to come on chain, we need to solve this blocker. We need to find a way to provide privacy on chain. And this is where our newest building block comes into the picture. Chainlink Confidential Compute. On top of this building block, the Chainlink Runtime Environment rests, and inside of it, the Chainlink Privacy Standard, which unlocks banking and capital markets innovation and TradFi coming on chain. And what this gives, what this gives rise to then is the notion Instead of the old notion of a public smart contract, the new notion of a private smart contract. A private smart contract is composed of three parts here. First of all, we have the on-chain part. Very traditional, just like on public chains, we can access all of the world's tokens, all of the world's liquidity. We can interact with the DeFi Legos running on all of these chains. Second, we have the off-chain part. All of the world's data, whether it's public web data, private web data behind some kind of authentication wall, proprietary price data, identity data, you name it. And then in the middle, bringing it all together, orchestrating it all, connecting it all, we have the Chainlink runtime environment, now also running Chainlink Confidential Compute. And there are three core capabilities to this in the Chainlink runtime environment. Confidential workflow execution, confidential connectivity, and the vault done powered by Chainlink distributed key generation, Chainlink DKG. Let me show you how it all fits together. The, the key component that I'm going to start with here is the vault done, which is responsible for long term decentralized secrets management. Secrets are stored here in a way where no single entity ever has access to them. No single entity can look at them. It's all fully decentralized, secured by advanced threshold cryptography, and even the setup for the system, the initial generation for the key shares that are needed to store this information is done fully trustlessly through our new Chainlink DKG protocol. And so then developers can store their long-term secrets in there, for example, through the CRE CLI, or other capabilities in the system can also encrypt their secrets to the vault on and have the vault on store them long term. But the vault on does not just store the secrets, it manages them. And managing the secrets also means providing access to the secrets only at the appropriate time, only to the appropriate recipient after all appropriate authorization, authentication, and remote attestation checks have been performed. And the vault on is the, is the keeper of the secrets that performs this role in the system. And again, it does this on a principle of least privilege, need to know basis. So it only gives access to secrets when they're strictly needed in that moment. And it's fully programmable, fully configurable by developers building on top of CRE. What this enables is not only best in class security, it's also future proofness. Because what it means is that we can keep all the secrets in the vault on and we can add more capabilities over time to the system. And all of these capabilities will be able to integrate with the vault on and depending on how a developer configures and programs the system, we'll be able to access the secrets stored in the system. Let me walk you through an example of a flow here just to give you an idea how it all comes together. So here we have a contract running on a public blockchain and that contract wants to participate in a, or wants to rather offer a compliant securities offering on chain, a compliant tokenized security. Now, when an investor wants to buy into the security, we need to make sure that the investor is one, not sanctioned, and two, an accredited investor, according to, for example, SEC, Reg D, Rule 501, or something like that. To do that, we need to perform income verification. We need to make sure that our investor um, makes enough money to fit the definition of this SEC regulation. And we want to do this fully confidentially because we're going to be looking at confidential financial information of that investor. That's not something that you would feel comfortable putting on chain. And so all this confidential magic can now happen in the Chainlink runtime environment. The only piece of information that ultimately goes back on chain is a single bit, yes or no. And the way this works, to put it all together here, is that 
the request comes from the contract to confidential workflow execution. Confidential workflow execution is running inside a secure cloud-hosted enclave and can run all the logic that performs this checking. It will, through confidential connectivity, access an API that provides, for example, identity or tax data. This API is secured behind an authentication wall, and the credential for this API will be stored in the vault on and will be provided just in time on this principle of least privilege basis to the confidential connectivity capability, which will return the confidential information fetched from the identity and financial API back to the confidential workflow execution, which can perform all the appropriate checks. If you're curious about that, I recommend checking out another talk we did at the event about protected pipelines where we have a very cool demo. And then ultimately put a single bit on chain, yes or no, the investor is approved or they're not approved. So to, to recap, the three key properties we achieve are one, end-to-end -end verifiability. A private smart contract, just like a public smart contract, is fully verifiable. Users and relying parties can know exactly what logic is running. But in addition to that, the contract can, in a flexible way, provide different levels of auditability to different parties, again, with a steam of privacy-preserving computation. We perform decentralized, long-term secrets management in the vault on, and all of this makes our architecture future-proof, where we can plug in more capabilities, and as time goes by, we can, as privacy research evolves, it's a very active area of computer science research, plug in more and more exciting cryptographic techniques to allow users and developers to choose their preferred trade-off between, for example, performance and trust assumptions. So that's, I think, also very important here because it's still such a rapidly evolving area of research that it would be hubris to assume that we can achieve perfection on day one. We, we need to stay on top of what's happening in the space and we can evolve the system alongside that to make it remain at the state of the art, remain at the forefront throughout. To learn more, I very much encourage you to check out the Chainlink Confidential Compute White Paper. I want to take this opportunity again to give a big shout out to the very talented and hardworking set of folks uh, listed here that have done all the hard work, turning this from a vision all the way into a reality. And I encourage you to check out the announcement blog listing all sorts of exciting use cases, private tokens, proprietary data, and so on and so forth. So please check those out. I also want to give a shout out to our hardworking privacy engineering team, whom we have closely collaborated with to make this happen. And so while I'm on the topic of giving credit in, in research and academia, this is always a very important part of the culture that I deeply believe in. And so and another thing that is very, very cool here, and that I think especially for those who have been following Chainlink for a while, will also be exciting is that the confidential connectivity capability of the CRE, of Chainlink Confidential Compute, is based on Town Crier, uh, an academic paper from 2016, um, two of whose authors are closely working with Chainlink, Fan as our academic advisor, and Ari, of course, as our chief scientist. Chainlink Confidential Compute is more than a paper. Early access is coming at the beginning of 2026 in the Chainlink runtime environment. Please try it out. Please let us know what you think. Please build the future of institutional-grade, privacy-preserving workflows. And that brings me to the end of the talk. And I hope that you take away, by virtue of these two examples of consensus and privacy, how we in research create highly dependable and innovative fundamental building blocks that power Chainlink and the entire ecosystem. And yeah, let's build taller and taller together. Let's build towards the future of on-chain finance. And let's have that future be constructed from rock-solid building blocks that you can literally bank on.